So let us spend some time in understanding P10 displays. So here I have considered a 16 pixel high and a 32 pixel wide P10 display. Okay. Here I am showing how I have connected my P10 display to my microcontroller board. So there are two terminals here, one terminal here and another terminal here and you can see that the microcontroller connection should be connected to the terminal near the inward arrow. Okay, This means that the data should enter P10 displays in, via this terminal and should go out via this terminal. Now you can see here about one more arrow which is pointing in the upward direction. So basically this indicates that you can have one more P10 display either connected adjacent in the horizontal direction to this first P10 display or vertically to this P10 display. That means, say suppose if I connect one P10 display next to this, so I'll be having a configuration of 64 pixels wide and 16 pixels high display. If I connect a display on top of this so I'll be having a configuration of 32 pixels wide and 32 pixel high okay now what are these connectors all about so this diagram I picked up from one of the Arduino forums basically explain about each and every pins so for now ignore about this D9 D7 D6 uh, D13, D8, D11. So basically these are uh, you know the suggested connections to be made to the Arduino pins to this P10 display controller. So what these things mean is OE stands for output enable, A and B are the lines which drive the LEDs, clock is the basically the clock input for shifting in the data into the P10 display. Then store clock is basically to store whatever the clocks I have used. So this is the internal construction of P10 display. Okay. So here you can see that the connector which I was just showing a few moments back. Okay, so this connection is here. Okay, now what are these elements? So let me run through them one by one. So as they are displayed here, these are our final LEDs, which we have to, you know, light them in a particular sequence to get our desired content to be displayed. Okay, now what are this D1 all the way up to D16, right? So these are nothing but shift registers, okay? Now, basically what they do is they take the input serially and they put that serial data in a parallel fashion. Basically, it is a serial to parallel converter, okay? So it takes 8-bit data and it puts out that 8-bit data parallelly out, okay? And you can also see here that the Q7 bar, the last bit, is given to the DS pin of the next shift register. This connection is followed all the way up to D16 from D1. Okay. Now, what? So this shifting, okay, so happens via SPI protocol. Okay. So for that, we also need the clock input right because spy protocol we need a master out slave input line to shift out the data to p10 display and a reference clock right and also along with it whatever data has been shifted into these shift registers you need to tell this shift register to retain that data whatever has been shifted in Right? So these two are achieved by these clock lines, the 
CLK and SCLK, right? So we talked about R, we talked about SCLK, we talked about CLK. Uh, there's some uh, spelling mistake. Now, coming to D18. So what this D18 is basically a decoder, okay? The most important part here is that the OE line, right? If you keep track of this, it goes to A2 from B2, it comes all the way to D19. So this is the inverter from D19, it goes to E2, okay? And again, it is inverted back and given to the output terminal, okay? So basically what it does is that it, it enables these transistors okay with along with a and b inputs they light up the leds in a given sequence okay so basically how we can get whatever display images or text we want to display on p10 is by shifting out the data via R pin and playing around A, B and OE. Okay, so what happens is if I go back to this picture, so what happens is the out without OE pin asserted and with various combinations of B and A, that means we have four values, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1 with B is equal to zero, A equal to zero, the first line uh, is selected and whatever data you have shifted out for the LEDs, which is stored in the shift register, based on that value, the respective LEDs will be lit up. Then for B is equal to one and, I'm sorry, so B is equal to zero and A equal to one, the second line, then B equal to one, and a equal to zero the third line and b equal to one and a equal to one the fourth line will be selected then the sequence repeats further like for b is equal to zero a equal to zero the first line and the fifth line will be selected then for b equal to zero a equal to one the second line and uh, the sixth line will be selected and so on that means for given combination of A and B, the respective lines will be selected and the whatever LED value you have been stored in the shift register, based on that value, the respective LEDs will be lit up. Now, what happens is that this sequence of you know manipulating A, B and output enable values happens so fast that you get an illusion that whatever you have sent to the P10 display, you are seeing it at once. But in reality, what will be happening is that it will select the LED lines in combination determined by A, B, output enable, and the values what you shifted into the shift register and light up those LEDs in those particular lines. As mentioned again, since it is very fast, you hardly see that flicker. So I would encourage you to go through the schematic, study the schematic and understand how this P10 display works. So with the understanding of how P10 display works, let us talk about how to build our software stack, okay? So here, I've just shown you a block diagram of how the software stack is built. So here, the hardware refers to the microcontroller unit and also its successive connections to the P10 display. And then, this two blocks combined together is the library what we are going to port to STM32. Now this, I would like to divide it into two parts. One is the core DMD display logic, 
where whatever the application wants to write to the display so the pixel basically the bitmap handling the pics we are like determining which pixels to light up which pixel to switch off is determined here and the driver is the one which does the physical toggling of the lines to the p10 display okay now as i mentioned that the p10 display you know it the data is usually shifted out from spy protocol we can have a spy driver or we can even have a driver which bit banks the spy logic okay so in our session what we are going to do is instead of having a spy we are going to write a driver or basically plug in the places wherever it is going to call a spy driver with our bit banging logic okay if you have any questions please do write them in the comment box below please do like share and subscribe for more videos thank you